Good afternoon. I am delighted to be with you all today. And the more I learn about TEDx, Centennial Park Women, the more inspired I am and so grateful to be here. I would ask you all today if you would just focus in with me the next few minutes on the idea that we are more alike than unalike. If we are more alike than unalike. I'm a black woman with a white mother. To me, that has meant that I have been very racially aware most of my life. I'm aware of what makes many of us different because of where we come from, our hair texture, our eyes, our skin color, all these beautiful variances that are attributed to where we've come from, where our families have come from, have always intrigued me. But I've been passionate about the conversation between races for a very personal reason. My mother, as I said, is a white woman. My father, an African-American from Snellville, Georgia, met on the campus of Morehouse and Spelman in 1968. When my mother was still carrying me in her womb, my parents had gone out to a movie at the old Rialto Theater and were confronted at a stoplight by a white racist male and a gun. He did not agree with the choice they made, and he made sure to let them know that it was not OK with him. I grew up hearing stories about how my mother's family threatened to disown her because they asked her, well, what kind of child will the two of you have? I grew up hearing all kinds of stories and seeing all kinds of stares so that when my mother and I would go out into public places, at the very young age of six, I would just say, mommy, just tell them you're my babysitter. Because I felt how uncomfortable the stares were. They were not stares of, oh, what a beautiful family that is or what joy they have. They were stares of disdain and unacceptability. So in a very personal way, I began to be confronted with how we think about race in this country, and in particular in this city. But it got even more personal, because at the age of seven, my mother still could not reconcile or put her mind around what it meant to be a white woman with a black daughter. So she left. And I didn't see her again until I was a senior in college. Fortunately for me, I was raised by an amazing father who had the wherewithal to surround his seven-year-old little girl with women from all races and all walks of life so that she could grow up knowing what it meant to be a woman first and a woman of color navigating this country we call America. As I processed all of this, it, it only enriched my faith and it encouraged me to truly understand what it meant to live out the reality of being a black woman by appearance in a world that did not necessarily embrace us all for our difference and even more so. Even today when I look in the mirror, I am the spitting image of my mother with a tan. So what that has continued to tell me day in and day out is that we truly are more alike than unalike. I was so struck by the poem that's now become famous by Dr. Maya Angelou entitled The Human Family. It's now the background of an iPhone commercial. I want to share a few of the verses with you. She says, I know 10,000 women called Jane and Mary Jane, but I've not seen any two who really were the same. I note the obvious differences between each sort and type, but we are more alike, my friends, than we are unalike. We are more alike, my friends, than we are unalike. The concern that I have today about this idea is that even as I said it in our very company, many of us shook our heads, yes, but we truly don't embody the ideal. We get stuck at the actual implementation of what appears to be so true and so real. 
Even Maya Angelou's poem is supported and echoed through science. The Human Genome Project came out with the findings that we are 99.95% the same. Our racial differences make up less than 1% of our genetic makeup, yes, yet like my mother. The very sliver of difference that we have has divided us, has become the basis for oppression, systemic injustices, has become what we base our assumptions on about the very next person who might be experiencing the very same things we're experiencing, but because they look different than us, it is very difficult for us to hear them, let alone to truly see them. If we are more alike, my dear sisters, than we are unalike, we should not allow something so minor and so artificially constructed to keep us apart. And why is that important? Because I truly believe that in order for this country, this world, this very community to be what it was created to be, women must lead the way. If you don't agree with me, let me share a few little quotes with you or paraphrases. I, I love the paraphrase of the prophet of the mid 19th century, Sojourner Truth, who in her speech, Ain't I a Woman, said, if God created the first woman who was strong enough to turn the world upside down, <laughs> then I propose that all of us gathered here today as women can darn well turn this world right side up. I believe that. I believe as the modern day prophet Beyonce <laughs> so powerfully exclaims, who runs the world? <laughs> that women can truly turn this world right side up. If we can get together, move past differences, stretch into areas that we've not stretched, become vulnerable in ways we have not become before. We can truly turn this world upside down. Here is a wonderful example that I experienced and had the privilege to experience just a few weeks ago where I saw this in action. I came together with some women in a Habitat for Humanity Women's Build. And we were brought together from all different races, all different walks of life, all different professions to do one thing, to build a house for another woman who needed a step up, who needed a place to raise her children, who needed an opportunity to live the American dream. So we all come together and we're getting our orientation and then we're being told some of you are gonna use power saws and some of us are like, whoa, some of you are gonna, gonna have to climb up ladders because the roof needs some fixing. Some of you are gonna have to put in some ceiling tiles. You're gonna have to do some things that you've never done before. And so we all kind of backed up for a minute, but then we realized what we were there for and we jumped in. And together, we were in spaces, close crop spaces, caulking windows and ceiling doors and ceiling crawl spaces. We were coming together not knowing each other not concerned about what differentiated us because we had a job that needed to get done. So we stretched past our comfort zones. We broke our fingernails. <laughs> our hair got messed up. And we did not care because we were there for a single focus. And because of the work that we did that day, we didn't transform the whole community, but we helped to be a part of the transformation of this single mother and her two children. So I wanna invite you to join me just for the next few minutes to build not just a house, but a community and a village so that we together can turn some things around because we are more alike, my friends, than we are unalike. So let's lay the foundation. Before you can get started on anything, you must have a firm foundation, is that right? So the firm foundation that I want us to lay is one in which we begin to speak truth to one another in love. There are some truths that we need to share with one another. There are some things that we need to say to one another, those of, who don't look anything like us and those who look like us, so that we can begin to embody and live out the idea that we are truly more alike than we are unalike. 
So the first truth is your good intentions are not enough. In this conversation about women from different races and ethnicities and religions, just because you think that things should be done a certain way, if you don't take the first step to change, they will never change. Just because you believe in the ideal that we are more alike than unalike doesn't change until you actually begin to act like we are more alike than unalike. Good intentions are not enough. We must also be willing to come face to face with our own biases and prejudices. Regardless of our race, we all have biases and prejudices. Regardless of where we come from, we all have our own built-in assumptions about what someone who's different from us thinks like, acts like. We all can judge and condemn without even knowing the person. But as we have this conversation, and speak truth and love, I also want to put out there that your defensiveness and your guilty feelings can no longer be a distraction for our connection. Amen. If I begin talking to you about the issue of race and you feel defensiveness rising up in you, that means you should listen all the more. Because what that is doing is showing you a mirror of some way in which you may have approached this that was not honest or grounded in truth. So your defensiveness and your guilt can no longer be used as a distraction. You can cry, but if you cry, you need to keep on talking. Find ways to connect to women who look nothing like you. It is also important for us as we speak truth and lay the foundation that we begin to build the frame. Expand the notions of what it means to be beautiful and brilliant and visible. Beauty should not be relegated only to someone of a certain hue or a certain hair type, but beauty can be embodied in a black is beautiful skin and topped with a fresh hair cut like Anita Baker. Beauty can be covered in a beautiful hijab or clothed in a sari or housed in skin that could only be sun-kissed in Havana, Cuba or Cartagena, Colombia. Beauty is not limited by race and hair texture and eye color. And brilliance is not limited by your status, your class, your position, or your race. The most brilliant women I know were my great-grandmother, who we affectionately call Big Mama, and my grandmother, who, because of their race and class, did not have educational opportunities. So they farmed and cleaned the floors of other women for a living. And as they bent over and cleaned and bent over and picked, their shoulders broadened so that I would have an opportunity to stand on them, even today. Visibility. We relegate so many women to being invisible and voiceless because of where they come from and what they look like. The girls that are being trafficked on the very corners of this city, we don't even look at them as human beings. But we determine they're invisible because of the station of life in which they're in. We must expand our notions of beauty and brilliance and visibility and expand the frame. We must build a roof that is willing to house all people regardless of where they come from, what they look like, what they've experienced, their station, their class, their race. We must advocate for a reality that does not only benefit us, those in the privileged class and of privileged hue must realize that if you do nothing the reality in which we live, the systemic reality in which we live, continues to benefit you day in and day out. But we must act in a way and advocate for a reality that looks at all, regardless of skin color, as valuable human beings. Advocate for a reality where those who have once been downtrodden now have opportunities to walk into a door and to have the same opportunities that those who have been more privileged have. Advocate for a reality where me, as a mother of two black boys, don't have to give a speech to my black sons that my grandmother had to give to my father 50 years ago. For a reality where my black boys are innocent until proven guilty, and where all of our children are valued as worthy and human and with dignity. So we've laid a foundation, we've expanded the frame, we've put a roof on top, now it's time to invite some folks in. 
At the young age of eight, I moved to Miami from Atlanta. Atlanta's very black and white when it, was, when it comes to race in the 70s. And in Miami, I was exposed to Cubans and Nicaraguans and Haitians and Jamaicans and Bahamians. And all of a sudden, I realized the world was more than black and white. And by breaking bread with families from other places, inviting people into your home and breaking bread, you experience a world that you had not yet known. So we've got to invite folks in who don't look anything like us. Break bread, have a meal, share a song. Maybe you love music. Dare yourself to experience some salsa merengue for a change. Listen to some good hip hop. I mean the 90s hip hop. <laughs> Embrace some soul, listen to polska, this, all kinds of, maybe you're an artist, look at some visual artwork by a person from another culture. Maybe you're a person of faith. Don't only go to church, go visit a mosque, go visit a temple. Look at how God has enriched the entire diverse world. So now that you've joined with me in this call to action to build a broader home, let me leave you with this last story. There's, a time in 1993 where I spent the summer in South Africa doing voter education and I encountered some women, these powerful women who were brave and courageous and took to the streets because they were tired of being tired. So I asked them, why are you risking your lives and going out on the street and fighting against apartheid? And the women said to me almost in unison, because we're tired of seeing our children killed and our husbands jailed. Something has to change. Their voices continue to echo in me. Not only am I determined in this life to prevent the type of division that occurred in my own home, where my mother couldn't take the difference, but I want to make sure that that's just not my personal story, that's our story. We've got to do like these women did in South Africa and take to the streets whether it's in corporate America, whether it's in your community, whether it's in your place of faith. Take to the streets, join together and proclaim that we are more alike than unalike, my friends. Do I have any women in here today that are willing to step outside of some comfort zones? Will you join me? Won't you stand if that's you? Will you invite someone in who looks nothing like you? Will you intentionally see someone who looks different from you, will you ask them how they're doing and actually listen to the answer? For we are more alike, my friends, than we are unalike. Thank you.